to Nicole's Kitchen. Today we're making some pink tacos. It's going to be amazing. It's very healthy. It's made with tuna. We got cranberry salsa. We got tropical salsa. Please hit the like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned so we can see some more. But before we begin, we have to wake Amy up, which can be a daunting task, I assure you. Give me one moment, guys. Amy, it's time to wake up. All right. We don't want to go in there because it's a little messy right now. Amy takes a few seconds to work her magic. And trust me, she's the fastest woman all life. See, told you. Amy, we're having pink tacos tonight. No. Yes, we are. Really? Yes. We're having pink tacos <laughs> made fresh, moist, soft, delicious, mm -hmm. and sweet. All right. So sit down, Amy. We're going to have some pink tacos. So take a bite, Amy, and tell me what you think of our soft, wet, pink taco. Mmm. How's it taste? It's actually really good. So we heard it here first, mm. folks. Amy likes pink tacos. Mm. Or do you say you love it? Love it. All right, so please stay tuned and see the rest of the recipe. Thanks for coming in, guys. Hit the like, share, subscribe. We'll be here. Today we're going to make Amy's dream come true. We're going to make her chef, er, we're going to make her pink tacos. You heard me right folks, we're making some pink tacos. So one of the most important parts here that we have to deal with is one of the salsas that we're making. Because we're making two of them. The first one we're making is cranberry salsa. Why? Because it's pink tacos and it's got to at least look as much pink on top as you can. So we're going to start off with a bag of of um, cranberries. I've got three cups of water boiling. I might actually have to add a little more, but it should be fine though. You know what? I'm gonna add one more cup. You know, that should be good there. So the trick here, folks, is you want to make sure that you have enough water in there so these are going to boil. We're going to let this boil for about 30 minutes. Now, in this, I'm going to dump some cinnamon. And mix that around really good. Cranberries are pretty tart, but that's all right because a lot of the rest of the ingredients are going to be pretty sweet. So you can use orange juice if you want. I'm not going to use orange juice. I'm going to use actual oranges. So I'm going to press. Some oranges here. It's one orange. I just have it cut up so I can put it in this uh, in this press. 
This is going to help the flavor of this. So pink tacos are going to taste amazing, delicious, and very, very savory and sweet. But if you're going to do this, you might as well take the time and make sure your flavors are all in there, because otherwise it's not going to be as good. And yeah, this is going to take a little bit of time to do. Now, if you're not diabetic and you're not worrying about your sugar, you can use a little bit of brown sugar, but you don't really need a whole lot. And I know this sounds a little bit weird because, I mean, pink tacos, I know what you're thinking. But honestly, uh, what it all boils down to is tacos offers a lot of different variety. So you don't always have to have, like, uh, like beef. You don't always have to have chicken. There's a lot of other things around, too. You can use fish, too. Yeah, fish is great. Or pork. Pork, shrimp. Yeah, uh, shrimp. All forms of seafood. Yeah. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the peels. And you ask, why would I use the peels, Paul? Well, they do add extra flavor. So we're just going to put this in here, give it one final stir. And we're going to let this sit for about 30 minutes. Then we're going to come back and we're going to check on the progress and see where we're at. I got it on number four, my Dell. They're not quite medium, but it should be there. So I'm going to set a timer here for 30 minutes. Somehow it goes on the I don't use timers very much, but just for the sake of making sure that I'm being a little bit more transparent, I use that. So, we're going to come back and... Oh, wait a minute. I almost forgot a little bit. One thing. We got some uh, Gucci Chang. It is a Korean hot sauce. It is not exactly as hot as what it could be. Uh, it would be described in the same level as jalapeno. So, I'm just going to dump a little bit in there. And if you're not accustomed to spicy food, jalapenos can be pretty spicy. They can be, but I don't, I'm not into hot food myself. I can't yeah. handle it anymore, but I can handle jalapeno. Raw jalapenos are pretty spicy with the seeds. Yeah, with the seeds. If you're going to cook with a jalapeno and you don't really like the spice, you just want a little flavor, cut it up, take the seeds out, and you should be all right. Yeah. It should be, keeping the keyword, but some people still won't. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to let this set for about 30 minutes. And then we're coming back and we're going to, uh, we're going to continue. So we'll be back. So we're back. So be before we uh, go any further, please hit the like, share, subscribe button. We really do appreciate it. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the orange peels. Now I'm going to put this in something that I can let this cool. I don't want to put this right into the garbage because, well, or compost, I should say, because, well, it's hot. Yeah. Now, Phelps can get a uh, good look in here. You can see how the, uh, how everything's all nice and broken down now. It's more of a jammy type of, uh, type of deal now yeah now if you're one of those people that wanted to use uh, that wanted to put a cinnamon stick take that out now because you don't need any more and what I'm gonna do oh well, I'm actually gonna take it right off the heat so I'm gonna take like a little portion of this not all of it because I mean some chunky is actually pretty good Now, if I was making this for more than just one meal, I probably would have preferred to get maybe, I don't know, two containers, right? This is great. You can put this with uh, cream cheese. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing to have to, to get. So I'm just gonna put this right in the blender. I already got it plugged in, which is rare for me. 
You want to make sure this is covered because if you don't, it's going to look like a bloodbath. It's going to go everywhere. Yeah, because you don't want that. So I'm going to go pure. Oil. Doesn't take very long. I'm going to put this back in here. sure we're scraping everything here because otherwise you know you're missing good product and that's not a good thing yeah and i'm you know going for some pretty nice tacos tonight so. i don't think i've ever had uh cranberry salsa in a taco before it's not exactly a common thing it is done it's more of a christmas thing yeah most people serve it with uh Most people serve it with uh, cream cheese. So I'm going to take this here and I'm just going to wipe it down. Or, pardon me, rinse it so that it makes it easier when you go to clean it. Because if you don't, then this is going to become a real pain. Unplug your stuff when you're done, folks, because it's pretty important that you do. Yeah, it can be a fire hazard. Yep, it is. So always unplug. And I do want to have a little bit of uh, chunkiness to it, so I'm only doing some of it, not all of it. And because this is going to be a real pain to clean later. Take this. I'm gonna mix it up really good. I don't want to go too crazy with the taste testing because it's not exactly a huge yield, and I want to have plenty for tacos tonight. So just want to taste the sauce a bit, and it's really hot. How is it? It's great. It's got a nice little zing to it. So I'm going to leave this over here on, a, uh, on the cutting board because it's still hot, but that has to cool because that does not get eaten hot, that gets eaten cold. Once it's cold enough, I'm going to stick that into the fridge. We don't want to be, uh, we absolutely do not want to be uh, eating this or putting this right into the fridge when it's really hot because it's going to cause problems. So we don't want to do that. Yeah. So we're going to leave that there. So what we're going to do for now, we're going to come back and we're going to make our uh, tropical salsa. But we're going to take a little bit of time to do some other things first. It's only early in the day. I just wanted to get that done because that had to be cooked down. So we'll be back. So we're back. So before we uh, go any further, please hit the like, share, subscribe button. We really do appreciate it. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the orange peels. Now I'm going to put this in something that I can let this cool. I don't want to put this right into the garbage because, well, or compost, I should say, because, well, it's hot. Yeah. Now, it helps them get a uh, good look in here. You can see how the uh, how everything's all nice and broken down now. It's more of a jammy type of uh, type of deal now. Yeah. Now, if you're one of those people that wanted to use uh, that wanted to put a cinnamon stick, take that out now because you don't need any more. And what I'm gonna do? Oh, well, I'm actually gonna take it right off the heat. 
So I'm going to take like a little portion of this. Not all of it, because I mean, some chunky is actually pretty good. Now, if I was making this for more than just one meal, I probably would have preferred to get maybe, I don't know, two containers, right? This is great. You can put this with uh, cream cheese. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing to have to, to get. So I'm just gonna put this right in the blender. I already got it plugged in, which is rare for me. You want to make sure this is covered because if you don't, it's going to look like a bloodbath. It's going to go everywhere. Yeah, because you don't want that. So I'm going to go pure. Oil. Doesn't take very long. I'm going to put this back in here. we're scraping everything here because otherwise you know you're missing good product and that's not a good thing yeah and i'm you know going for some pretty nice tacos tonight so. i don't think i've ever had uh cranberry salsa in a taco before it's not exactly a common thing it is done it's more of a christmas thing yeah most people serve it with uh Most people serve it with uh, cream cheese. So I'm going to take this here and I'm just going to write it down. Or pardon me, rinse it so that it makes it easier for me to go to clean it. Because if you don't, then this is going to become a real pain. Unplug your stuff when you're done, folks, because it's pretty important that you do. Yeah, it can be a fire hazard. Yep, it is, so always unplug. And I do want to have a little bit of uh, chunkiness to it, so I'm only doing some of it, not all of it. And because this is going to be a real pain to clean later, Take this. I'm gonna mix it up really good. I don't want to go too crazy with the taste testing because it's not exactly a huge yield, and I want to have plenty for tacos tonight. So I just want to taste the sauce a bit, and it's really hot. How is it? It's great. It's got a nice little zing to it. So I'm going to leave this over here on, a, uh, on the cutting board because it's still hot, but that has to cool because that does not get eaten hot, that gets eaten cold. Once it's cold enough, I'm going to stick that into the fridge. We don't want to be, uh, we absolutely do not want to be uh, eating this or putting this right into the fridge when it's really hot because it's going to cause problems. So we don't want to do that. Yeah. So we're going to leave that there. So what we're going to do for now, we're going to come back and we're going to make our uh, tropical salsa. But we're going to take a little bit of time to do some other things first. It's only early in the day. I just wanted to get that done because that had to be cooked down. So we'll be back. Welcome back. So we got our cranberry salsa done and I'm telling you it smells incredible. So now we're going to be working on our tropical salsa. Alex, do you know what tropical salsa is? Is it like mango salsa? Well, we're not doing mango because Amy's allergic to that. But, oh, okay. But you kind of got the idea. So I got one jalapeno. It's full. Not into the food processor. I've got some cilantro. 
And I just want to make sure that it's fully diced up. And Amy's going to kill me because she's going to wake up to a lot of dishes. <coughs> but that's all right. I've got a can of mandarins. They're clean. You don't have to worry about peels or anything like that. And they're fresh. I mean, this time of year in Nova Scotia, it's not always easy to get. So, And the whole point is, is I want things to go in to into a salsa or into the salsa so they're nice and small. So chances are I'm probably gonna have to do two two runs here. I got some peaches. These are all canned. And I'm telling you right now, I know that you're what you're thinking. Canned stuff isn't necessarily is the best. However, this is uh, not the easiest to get all the time. So it is what it is. Not much you can do. And I only have to do one run. So and then we got apricots. A can of apricots, a can of uh, peaches. So I'm just going to put this in here for now. I'm going to step away from it. And I got a can of pineapple. Shouldn't be too surprised here because, you know, me and my pineapple. Because Chef Paul really likes his pineapple. What you want to do when you're cutting this up, just uh, just make sure you're draining the liquids out as much as possible. A little bit of liquid's all right. Too much might be a little bit of a problem. So you don't ever really want to have too much. The first part of the, uh, the dish, which was the cranberry salsa, cranberries tend to be a little bit of tart. If you're somebody that's not diabetic and you don't mind putting a little bit of sugar in, that's going to help make it taste a whole lot sweeter. However, to combat this, we're using fruit. Natural sugar, nothing added, it's pretty good stuff. So bear the noise here. And just like that, we got the salsa there. I'm just going to give it a really quick taste. But this is people, it's why you always take a moment and always taste what you're doing. Because honestly, it's, it's always a good thing to do because this gives you an opportunity to, if it needs something else, then you know what to put in. So I'm just going to get back to here. Now this, this step, you can probably just use a blender if that's what all you have. Blender will do just fine. Blender is not going to do anything bad. It will actually work quite well. So I'm going to shove this in here. And uh, Terho, if you're looking for something really, really hot on this, add a lot more jalapeno. Add, uh, add some maybe sauce, some scotch bonnets. That would actually help. That would do really well for you. Add those. Those will literally, those will literally come out much, much better for you. It'll make it nice and spicy and hot. Where this is a tuna based dish, you don't need it to be flaming hot and it probably shouldn't be. But a little bit of a little bit of spice isn't gonna kill it. Right? Yeah. Cilantro and the rest of the fruit will give us a lot better nice flavor. How is it? Really good. Really good. So only thing that's left is uh, is the uh, tuna, and that's coming next. So let this rest a little bit, put it in a fridge, put it in some containers. Good for chips, good for everything else. It's going to be amazing. So now all we have left is the fish, but I'm going to wait a little bit before we do that because uh, Amy's not even awake yet, and it's really for her. So we want to make sure we do that. 
And since we're calling this pink tacos, by the way, pink taco toes. So here we go. So we'll be back soon. Welcome back. So we're ready for the tuna. So first of all, we want to put some oil into our pan, into our pan here. If you have it, you need to be using cast iron. Yeah. Nothing else is going to do here. So I'm going to put that on five, and we're going to let this heat. And the reason I'm doing this this way right now is because of is because mainly I want it to be nice and hot when I'm ready to start cooking. Now we don't have any olive oil; it's particularly expensive right now, so we're not. I didn't buy it. We still need more oil, but we'll buy it later when it comes on sale. Mate, send my wife over to Sobeys, see what it's like. And I'm going to put some oil, and I'm going to put some salt, and this is low sodium salt. I'm going to put some pepper. And this is maple bacon spice. Mm. Sounds good. Is it good? Oh, it's very good. We don't need to go too terribly heavy on the spice on this because honestly, it's it's if you're cooking this on its own, this is going to be your meal. Yeah, absolutely, hands down, do that. Yeah, but this is going to be like with a uh, uh, salsa as well. Yeah, this is going in a taco, so it's not necessary. Now you're going to find that this is a lot like steak. Yeah. So while I'm doing this, I'm going to brush. A thick cut of tuna is a lot like steak. Oh, it's, a, it's extremely like steak. Yeah, very similar. Very similar. And all I'm doing here is I want to sear. So when I say it's a lot like steak, it's like steak to the degree of uh, it's all we're trying to do is sear. Yeah. That's basically the only thing I'm trying to do. I don't want to do anything else here. I just want to sear. I'm going to put that in a pan here. You really only want to sear it for maybe a minute or a few minutes on. A few minutes. You want it, but you want to make sure that that it's you know cooked. Yeah. On the outside, so it's here. It's still going to be relatively pink on the inside, and that's what you want. This is why this is called the pink taco, because tuna is pink. Yeah. This is going to be a lot better quality tuna, too, than the canned tuna. Absolutely. And this is one of those things, it's going to be the same consistency as, say, buying sushi. Now, yeah. if you're one of those people who said, say, well, I love tuna, but I don't like sushi, because you say that you don't like it because it's not, it's not really cooked. Well, here's the thing. I'm going to wake you up to what real life is. Guess what? Tuna is never actually fully cooked. It just isn't. Um, it is what it is. You don't have to like it, but that's just the way it is. Tuna, believe it or not, folks, it is not actually cooked. Even on those cans where it says fully cooked. Yeah. So, I mean, there's some that, believe it or not, are actually are actually cooked. Yeah. Now, but. I mean, if you want, but if you really want good tuna, it has to be not, it can't have it cooked all the way. You just can't do that. Yeah, it's like, just like steak, you don't want to cook it all the way through. No, it's, because honestly, it's, it's just not, it's just not going to, it's not going to taste right. Yeah. So I'm just going to take a moment here and I'm going to just sear the, the, the sides here. It doesn't need a whole lot. 
Another word of advice too, when you're dealing with uh, cast iron, don't put your hands on the actual pan. Yeah. Because it's really, really hot and you're gonna get really, really hurt. Even the handle gets really hot. Yeah, because it's 100% cast iron. Yep. How's that smell, Oaks? Smells pretty good. And the best part about this, guys, this is fresh salmon. Now, if you can only find at a reasonable price cans of tuna, you don't even need to do this. Just serve it from the can. Uh, and it's not that bad, to be honest with you. You have a little bit of a sodium issue, but it's still, it's, it's not, it's really not that bad. See here, folks, it honestly didn't take much. So I'm going to take the heat off here. Everything's all cooked and ready. The only thing is, now what we need to do, guys, is we need to let that tuna sit and rest. It's like a steak. You finish cooking your steak, you don't take it in and start cutting it. You never do that. That is the worst thing you'll ever do. What you do is you let this sit. I'm going to let this sit for 10 minutes. If I serve this cold, that's perfectly fine to me. It doesn't need to be hot. If you want, you can heat this up in a microwave, but you know what? Stay, just stay tuned and pay attention, guys. We're gonna be doing a video on the things that you do not ever want a microwave. That's coming. So, but please hit the like, share, subscribe button. I appreciate you for being here. This is gonna be really epically awesome. I can't wait for you guys to see the end result. Heck, I can't wait for Amy to see the end result when she wakes up to getting some pink tacos. <laughs> We'll be back. Welcome back. This is Chef Paul, and we've let this sit for long enough. We don't need to wait any longer. And I'm sure Alex is getting a little hungry. I know. Yeah. Amy's going to be a little hungry when she gets home now, or when she gets up. Sorry. And notice how this is nice and pink on the inside. Yeah. And that's the way it's supposed to be. So, if somebody starts questioning you, it's like, hey, why is why is my fish pink? Well, that's the way it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be, uh, it's absolutely not supposed to be uh, fully cooked. It's just, it's the way it is. Um, and the funny thing is, these are the same people who would eat sushi. Yeah, a lot of times you'll eat sushi and not even realize, or, or the whole reason you don't like sushi is because, well... Um, it's raw fish. It's raw fish. But yet, you don't mind making a tuna sandwich. Well, here's a funny bit. Uh, you're eating raw fish anyways. Yeah. But you gotta realize there's fish that's alright to eat raw, and there's fish that isn't. Tuna is one of those that is. So, yeah, it's a little messy. And that's fine. We like being messy, don't we? Yeah. That's why we're men. Women not so much, but most of the time anyways. Now I'll stick Amy in front of a, uh, a box of chocolate that's all full of cocoa and everything else. And yeah, she's going to get me some dirty oil really quick. Or cheese. Or cheese. Well, cheese not so much. Cheese isn't that messy. And this is basically show you how to make it. How to plate it, I should say, because we know how to make it because we just washed that. Now, these are advertised as pink and... They're not. Not at all. 
I'm a little disappointed. Me too. You can get these on the Amazon pretty darn cheap. And you know what? You know what? Why am I wasting my time? Because I'm just going to have to do this thing. So, got three things here, and now for my tropical salsa. I'm just going to put a little down here so it doesn't get too terribly messy. Is that one for Amy? Yeah, because she's going to be the one we're going to film when she wakes up. All right, and that'll be pretty soon. Yeah. As soon as I actually finish making one, I'll be waking her up. So I'm just going to put some tuna on the bottom. And then you got to put that uh, cranberry sauce on it too. Yep, that's coming next. That's right here. So the salsa is really, really tasty. The only downfall is if you really want, if you would like to have this for, uh, if you like to have this for more like chip dip and stuff like that, you kind of want to have, uh, you want to have like two or three bags of, of uh, you want to do the recipe like two or three times more than what I did. Yeah. Because it just doesn't offer that much. It looks like it would, but it doesn't. And I'm alright with that because it's just going for tacos. Yeah. So here are my tacos. Um, Look pretty good. So please hit the like, share, subscribe button. I want to hear how uh, everybody thinks. Uh, does this look good to you? I think it looks really good. I think it looks great. Like... And it's healthy because tuna is really good for you. It's something that everybody should eat more of. So again, please hit the like, share, subscribe button. I hope you guys all like it. And until next time, please uh, try to stay fit. Look forward to my next video, which is going to be on things not to microwave and why. Have a great day, guys.